Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, attending another class of RM Smart Investing. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful week so far. Uh, today, we're going to continue our uh, continue with our uh, uh, study of the technical analysis, which we started last week. And basically, what we worked on last week on, it was more on the uh, uh, on the classical technical analysis. And this week, what we're going to work on is the modern technical analysis, which we call them the indicators and a few other uh, uh, actually added bonuses, uh, I would say, for the modern technical analysis. So when, when we, before we start actually even talking about the technical analysis, it is very important to know, and I've, I've emphasized this in many of our other classes, you have to know whether you're an investor or trader whether you are in for a long term, you're gonna be buy and hold, you're looking for a value and you're gonna be there for a long term, or you're gonna be a, a, a short term investor or maybe a swing trader. So it's gonna be maybe from minutes to days and maybe weeks. So once we separate that, it makes our job a lot easier to understand whether we wanna really emphasize more on the fundamental side of the uh, companies or economy, or we want to work more on the technical side of the, let's say in this situation, if you want to do in, in, in investments in stocks, or if you're going to do with the futures, commodities, and uh, currencies, for instance. So once we learn that, the, the shorter the term, the better the technical analysis work. Of course, when we're looking at the macro economy, obviously the fundamentals play a huge role. But if you're talking about individual holdings, for instance, then that's really want to emphasize on the fundamental side. And that's where the time frame comes. So the shorter the time frame, the better it is to, uh, to work on technical analysis. And because of that, then the modern technical analysis takes a bigger role than the classical technical analysis. So basically, when we talk about classic versus modern. When we talk about the classical technical analysis or modern technical analysis, last week we noticed that it was basically based on price and it was very visual. We, we, we talked about pattern recognition. And when we look at that as a pattern recognition, uh, I mentioned it becomes subjective. So it's more of an art in a sense, even drawing like uh, the, the, the trend lines or looking at something and they say, well, this is a head and shoulder or is a double bottom. So there's not exact science. On the other hand, when we talk about the modern technical analysis, we look at uh, like the indicators, they are more scientific and mathematical oriented and they become like a really derivative of the prices the volume, actually it could drive from another indicator, which we'll discuss, for instance, like MACD is drive from moving averages. So basically that's different. So it is more of an exact science rather than uh, subjective art. Still, there's gonna be subjectivity with this, but because it's more mathematically oriented, it has a lot more validity from that point of view. So, before we start discussing what the indicators are, first of all, you have to understand what kind of a trader are you? Because each one of us have different belief system. We have a different attitudes about investing and trading. So I put down about seven different, I'm sure you can come up with 20 or 30 different, but I, I thought this will be um, the, the chunk of the majority of traders that I know. So you have to really define what kind of a characteristic you have. So for instance, a lot of people are trend following. So they look at whether uptrend or downtrend, they, they get their um, signals based on that. And that will be one. Some people are very, quite a few people, especially in the last few years, for instance, the, they had the uptrend, they're very much momentum oriented. They, they look at the, the, the price velocity and they look at the strength of the trend and they stay with that. So their momentum. Some people like myself, I'm a contrarian and I look at the extremes and I, I look at when the things are really, again, the elastic band is 
very much uh, extended, stretched, and that can be contrarian. Some people don't care about really the price. So they look at the volatility. They take care of, they want to see, uh, they don't care about the direction, but they, they live on the volatility. So they need volatility indicators, for instance. Some people, on the other hand, are market neutral. They don't care. They look at the delta, for instance, when if you're an option trader, and they just want to take advantage of that. Uh, they, they look at the negative positive delta. They just want to take advantage of it. On the other hand, again, if, especially again, you're an op, you're option trader, you, maybe you're an income trader. You look at the spreads and basically look at the opportunities that you are uh, want to take advantage of, uh, again, the combination of the, the, the implied volatility and the time value. And uh, basically, the doesn't have to be except for the mo movement of the price. You just want to take premiums, and you're happy with that. So that will be income trader. And the last but not least is, especially if you do futures trading, you're a scalper and you're a frequent trader, you look at just a few points, you wanna get in and get out. So perhaps you're looking at, uh, basically your technical indicators will be very short term and you're really looking for uh, fast moving indicators, all right? So once you define that, then you can understand uh, the indicators better and which ones match your, again, characteristics. So before we go any further, I thought, Let's have a little definition so you can become familiar with the terminology that I'm going to use. Uh, uh, one thing is we, we will be discussing in our indicators, there are leading indicators there are, and there are lagging indicators. So the leading indicators, what they look at, they attempt to predict where the price is headed. So uh, they, they, we will discuss some of those leading indicators that they give you a heads up. On the other hand, you have lagging indicators that they offer historical report of the background conditions, where the money, where the prices have been, and where the current prices are relative to historical prices. And those indicators are called lagging. So they don't give you the, the futuristic part of things, they give you what is happening in the past. And based on that, you can decide if the trend is going to continue, if it's up, the markets are going up, they're down, or they're going sideways. The other uh, term I like you uh, understand is the oscillator. So one, we, we hear about the trading indicator like oscillators. And an oscillator is like, it's a technical analysis tool that constructs high and low bands between, again, two extreme values. And that then we build a trend indicator that fluctuates. So basically we have the high and low, and these are basically derivatives of the price. So we build that, and then we will see if something is overbought based on the, again, historical uh, numbers based on experiences that we've had. For instance, if you use RSI, we use like 70 or 30. And it's kind of arbitrary. We decide that over 70 is overbought, under 30 is oversold. And that's what the oscillator works at. Now, they can stay extreme levels, for instance, and we will discuss that. And sometimes we call them embedded. They are overbought or can be oversold for a long time, but they cannot continue for the sustained period of time. They cannot be. Um, a long, long time. On the other hand, you have securities that they can, they, they, cumulatively, they can continue and they can go up as long as it, there is that um, uh, momentum and strength. And, you know, some of the indicators are like, we will discuss it, it's unbalanced volume and uh, that can continue increasing or decreasing with no really limitations of price um, bands, I should say. Before I go any further and talk about the types of indicators, I just want to clarify that today's class, what I'm trying to achieve is just give you an overview of all these indicators. So it's not meant to be to go in depth and each one of them to, uh, you know, di to be digested. Uh, we've had uh, in many of the topics that you're seeing today, we've already have had individual uh, classes and uh, videos because I want to spend, you know, again, in-depth analysis of each indicator, whether it's Ichimoku, whether it, 
it is Bollinger bands, Fibonacci, stochastics, or um, uh, we, we talk about like MACDs. So all of those have had their own classes. They've had their own strategies. So today I just wanna make sure it's you're clarified that one indi what indicators suit you best in what environment. And because of that, it kind of minimizes the, the, the variability of the options out there. I mean, when you go and think with Swim or TradeStation or many other platforms, there are hundreds and hundreds, because the 300 technical um, indicators are out there and they become very confusing and sometimes they become very redundant. So the idea is I just wanted to choose some of the, the, the most used ones, most familiar ones that have been uh, uh, basically they have the most profitable ones. So we can narrow like 300 in just a few handful or maybe, you know, in 10, 15 of them. So you don't have to be all over. Unfortunately, it's very time consuming. So that's why I want to clarify. That's the purpose of our class today is just an overview. So let me talk about types of indicators. There, as I mentioned, there are two types. We talked about the lagging and the best one is the moving averages and anything related to moving averages. So basically moving averages are, you know, they take average of the past uh, prices and they just average it out. So moving averages are lagging. Keltner channel, which is depending on that, is a lagging moving uh, a lagging indicator, Bollinger bands, standard deviations. On the other hand, we have quite a few which are their leading, like stochastics, MACD. MACD could be incidental, but it is all, it's a very good actually trend analysis and it can give you a heads up about the trend. And uh, RSIs, uh, parabolic SAR, uh, Fibonacci, Ichimoku, which again, we have classes on all of these and unbalanced volume. So if you are looking at the future, you wanna see where the price could go, then we will use the leading indicators where you wanna see where you are right now. And based on that, make a decision that what action you wanna take, then you will use the lagging indicators. The second part I want to understand is these indicators, especially if you use some of the oscillators, uh, the derivatives, and usually these are on the bottom or up. Uh, they're not in the inside the charts or on the they're separate uh, addition to the charts or indicators. They could be bounded or could be unbounded. When we say bounded, that means there's the numbers go from zero to 100, for instance. And basically what we do is if it's, again, it's 30 or lower, for instance, like RSI is bounded. RSI goes from zero to 100. Stochastics also goes zero, 100. The CCI, Williams percentage R. Unbounded means the lines can continue. So they don't have these borders per se. So they can be go overbought and they can continue. And some of the, those indicators are like MACD, ADX, DMI, the rate of change or ROC. So these, they don't have zero to 100. So that's, um, I wanted to make sure. Of course, when it comes like something like MACD, we have built like a histogram and that histogram gives us the indication uh, with the zero line and which again, we have a class on the MACD, you can study it, but that the histogram tells us where the trend has changed and you know we can look at also the momentum. So let's uh, start, I have uh, seven different kinds of indicators. And as I mentioned, it all depends on your personality. So I want to show, uh, you know, if you're a trend following, for instance, so some of the indicators for trend is the moving averages. I put curve, because moving averages are not a straight line. They, they move, but if you are the direction, the angle and the movement is upward, so obviously that's a, it's a, the trend is up. If it's flat, then you know it's pretty neutral. If it's down, then it's, uh, it's a downward uh, trend. So that's curving. On the other hand, you can draw a linear regression line and that it's actual flat line. This also works with your, um, basically your classical analysis when you did the support and resistance, but also drew the lines 
from maybe the lows, the lows or highs to the highs. And basically that tells you what trend, where the trend is. And also the parabolic star could also be telling you if you're in the uptrend with the change of the colors and the dots, so the parabolic star is dots, then you know whether you're in the uptrend or you're downtrend. And also it allows you to have support and resistance based on that. Now, you could be also momentum indicators, indicators which is a momentum in, uh, uh, trader that it is very popular. And based on that, then you can use stochastics, MACD, price oscillator, uh, RSI, relative strength, index um, on balanced volume. So these all are very good indicators for the momentum and it keeps you on the right track, just telling you, you know, this momentum will continue or we're getting really tired. Um, the third part is you mentioned about the, if you're a, a volatility trader, you're looking at the volatility, but also again, it could be also for contrarian. So I'm looking at the, the rate of the price movement uh, basically, I just want to see, are we expanding? Are we, the volatility is going down? And based on that, I can take, make a decision which, uh, which action I want to take, especially if you're an option uh, trader. So for that, you know, again, Bollinger Bands are wonderful Bollinger Bands, but because they use moving averages, then that's what I put down curve. Keltner channels also, they are using, because they're using average true range, the ATR, and that price can be moving, um, can be changing. So I put the curve. So the, uh, that's also, it's a volatility band for you. And as well as like standard uh, uh, deviation, and that's the channel that that's, but that one is a line. So based on that, you can see if the volatility is increasing. Again, you look at the standard deviation, which is a, um, uh, basically it is the, the, the volatility and variability. Um, the other part you can use is the strength indicators. You wanna see how uh, your, um, how uh, the, the strength of the movement, the trend of your price, if that movement, whether up or down, is this is the trending, how, f f um, how much can it go, how much fuel is there, and again, relative strength index, you can see there's overlapping between momentum and, uh, for instance, strength indexes. That's something that allows you to know if this momentum will continue. There's a lot of strength. Now, something like ADX, which is the average directional index, is really neutral. It's in, it, in this situation, it does not give you the direction for that you will use DMI plus or DMI, DMI negative each one indicating it's a positive moving up or down. ADX allows you to know if your trend, how strong it is. And based on that, then you can say to yourself, well, maybe it's a good time to initiate this position. If let's say based on your other indicators, if it's the trend is going up, then you can actually use the ADX, which is the average direction in, in index and see, let's say uh, we have arbitrary number of 20, if it's above 20, that means this trend is strong. Now, the, this could be above 20 and the stock could be going down. That means the downward trend is strong. Um, one of the things also I uh, want to mention about momentum, there's actually something called momentum uh, indicator, which when we use like a squeeze, we combine that. So. Uh, but by itself, you don't use that a lot. We use all of these other ones. But when we try to do a squeeze indicator, which is a Keltner channel with the, with the Bollinger Bands combined, that momentum uh, indicator gives us a good heads up which way the market is going. Uh, the, the last one on these strength is that the commodity channel index, which is similar to RSI, and that's the CCI. It also gives you how strong we are. Um, the next indicator is, is it, now this one, a derivative of the volume. So as you know, the volume is the fuel for the price. I mean, the price can go up and down, there will be volatility, but if there's not enough um, buying or selling going on, you know, eventually it's gonna dry out. So volume is very important. So for that, 
the indicators that you could use, obviously, you can use the volume average, which is like, like the mean of the volume that surpassed 50 days or 50 bars or 20 bars. And then relative to that, you know where you stand. Volume profile, which is like a market profile, we've discussed that, that has a class on its own based on the types of charts. That one tells us at what price over, let's say, past 30 days, 30 minutes, 100 days, basically past year, what price has had the most volume? So it tells you there has been a lot of activity in certain time or certain price, and that's volume profile. And volume oscillator, it tells you that actually, it's almost like a Mac piece that, that it looks at the moving averages of the two, two moving averages of the volume, and it then averages down and shows if, where are we relative to the moving averages of past. So if you're going up, basically there's a strength where the volume is coming. So whether the price is going down or up, but the volume, how heavy of the volume is there. Then the, one of the favorite ones for a lot of people who are, uh, they like to combine the price and the volume is the unbalanced volume. And this uses the price and volume and it tells you how strong the movement is. So if the price is going up and the volume is pushing it up, that means that there's most likely more strength because there's more fuel. So the, the difference between unbalanced volume and RSI, RSI purely works on the price. So it disregards the volume. So you could have a very small volume, but a big jump on the price, but which could be uh, a suspect, but with unbalanced volume, you actually can see if there is, um, actually there is enough uh, enforcement and a lot of, you know, let's say if it's going up, there's enough buying power behind it. Another indicator uh, that we could use for the technical line is the channel indicators. Now in the, um, we looked at, for instance, uh, we've talked about the classic channels. We look at, the, again, we can draw the line, support and resistance, and visually can see things. But you can also, you can use the price channel, but also you can use the moving averages envelope, for instance. And because it is based on moving averages, you can use um, two and a half standard deviation based on the moving of five. You can, the distance or... Um, uh, I mean, two and a half times the distance, let's say you use, um, these are the percentages, there's not a standard deviation, these are the percentages of the moving average, you can go two and a half percent higher, two and a half percent lower, five percent, five percent, and again, we've had a class just purely on moving average envelopes, you can look at it, but because it's a moving average, so it has a curvature, but on the other hand, one of my favorites, which I use, is the linear regression channel line. And that one is because it's line and it's based on the regression channel, then it goes to standard deviation out. These are very good, for instance, for me to either um, look at the extremes and for the, as a contrarian investor or trader, I look at, like, let's say I use linear regression channel a lot. I use Bollinger Bands a lot. I look at the moving average envelopes uh, and, um, you know, uh, besides that, like Keltner channel, these are all good for whether you're, if you're a momentum trader, they are very good. And if you are basically a contrarian, they can be very good. Uh, you also can look at the money flow and the money flow, again, it takes into consideration the, 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 the volume behind it. And uh, there's actually, uh, there's quite a few, but I just chose these two. There's a money flow based on the closing price. Then you have a cumulative distribution line, which also looks at the, the flow of the money. You can see how much money is coming in. Now the accumulation distribution, the difference between this and the money flow is money flow look at the close of the closing price. The cumulative distribution looks at the, the range, the price range and the volume. So these are also very important to see again, is there any strength? So 
what we, we look at these indicators, especially the oscillators that we talked about, let's say we looked at the bound boundaries zero to 100, for instance, we can look at them in three different ways. We can see if they are overbought, oversold. And as I mentioned before, you know, oscillators, they can be overbought for a long time or it could be oversold. So just by itself, let's say we use RSI just because it goes to 71 or 72, that does not mean that this is end of the, the trend. We have to combine with, again, with other things. What we like to do is when actually turns down and goes below the 70, that tells us that it looks like the, 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 the buyers are getting tired. For instance, this was overbought. That gives you direction uh, as far as a guidance. The other things you can use the oscillators based on direction. And you can see if the momentum is going up, if the RSI is moving up, especially I use like number 50 for these, it gives me a better look at how much of a strength there is. Let's say if they're going up or down, if you go below 50, then we are running out of steam. The, the last, but I think it's very, very important and is one of the best things that these oscillators are used for and they, they play a huge role is the divergence. Remember, the momentum leads the price. So because momentum leads the price, once the, it gets tired, once the things are turning around, while the price is going up, that gives you the heads up. So that's very important in many of you know, these indicators, whether you're using RSI or MACD or we, we use CCI, we look for that. We look for uh, the, the divergence, whether, again, there is uh, higher prices, but the lower momentum um, or lower prices or higher moment. So you look for those little, um, you know, uh, guidances to see maybe, again, either we are running out of buyers or you're running out of sellers or they're getting tired. So this is very important about oscillator, whatever oscillator that you're using. Uh, the last thing I have to say in this is one of the reasons I want to do this class is to make sure that you are not overwhelming yourself with too many indicators because it can become very um, complicated, complex, and confusing. So Basically, the idea is the simplicity. It's, it's, it's about clarity. And you want to make sure, again, if you have all these indicators that I put down, you don't want to mix all of them in one place. So you want to combine two or three. Let's say if you're doing the volatility, for instance, if I'm doing the volatility, I want to combine something with the momentum. For instance, I just want to give you uh, three just examples, you want to make sure your indicators, they complement each other. So um, now we put down Haikanashi. We've had a class on Haikanashi. Haikanashi is a candlestick chart pattern, which actually is a very good momentum candle. And it allows you to see the change of the trend and also the movement. Now, if I combine that with MACD, that's a very strong combination and it gives you the confirmation that you're on the right side or you can initiate a new position or get out of your old position, at least lighten up. So that's one example for complementing. If you're using Keltner, for instance, now with Keltner is based on ATR. Now with ATR, if you go outside, now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're overbought in the sense that, oh, you know, the, the, the market cannot continue outside your ATR bands, that can tell you there's a strength and it could continue. So what I could look at it, if I'm a momentum trader, I look at that and I look at RSI. So if the RSI is going up, so the momentum is going up and the price is outside Keltner channel, as a momentum trader and the trend follower also, then I say, well, there's a strength. I'm going to stay with this. I'm not going to go automatically saying that, oh, you know, RSI, you know, because we are outside the Keltner channel, it's time to, to sell, for instance. So we look at that. As a contrarian, on the other hand, I wait for to see, all right, if it goes outside Keltner channel, then turns around and it comes inside. And RSI is already, you know, was overbought and not turning. 
then I say, well, we were overextended. So this is time to perhaps um, choose, you know, maybe in this case, maybe short the markets, at least get out of my longs in that situation. The other one that I use quite often is the Bollinger Bands and the stochastics. Again, it's the momentum indicator. The stochastics give me the indication that are we really overstretched on the Bollinger Bands and it's similar to Keltner, all right? So basically you could see there were like a seven different indicators. So just mix and match. So you could maximize your efforts and minimize the number of the indicators in your chart because what is the sense of having one chart and have like eight indicators in there? And I will use some examples of these charts so it can make it a little easier to understand. Before I go any further, this was a study done on the, um, this is based on the, the mobile apps that they use, the, these indicators. So they found out that the most popular indicator was RSI, 13.2%. Bollinger Bands were 11.6% as, as part of the technical indicators. And then simple moving average is 9.9. .9. Uh, the stochastic was 8.6. Exponential moving average was 6.9. And the other indicators are 49.7. Just give you an indication that how the um, people are you know, some of the traders in today's world are using these so let me finish our class with some examples again it's going to be a little crowded but i just want to put all the indicators so you can get familiar if you haven't used them in the past so this is a simple every one of these are today's date on the spider which is s p 500 etf so what we have done we've used the moving averages so basically they are you know, the uh, lagging indicators. So we have a 200 simple moving average, we have a 50 simple moving, and then we have 20 exponential moving average. So if you go above that, let's say above the moving averages, then we are an uptrend. And as you can see that 50 day moving average held. So that was good news. Uh, although we had like these big candles. Now we also can use the, the MACD is a stochastic, so use the fast on this one, just give you, which is a little noisier. So the, 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 when you use a longer term, you wanna use a slow stochastic, but I have another example. So I, I just want to show you different uh, versions of let's say stochastics so you, so you can compare. And of course we use the RSI indicator. So that tells us, we can see when it was overbought. Now, Basically, this is a very good indication right here. You see the price did go up. So if I draw a line, the price was going higher while the momentum actually was declining. And this is what I mean by divergence. The same thing, you can see the same thing with the MACD and in the histogram, we were really diverging. So just uh, one lesson. So in one chart, we have our moving averages, RSI, MACD and stochastic. The next one, uh, again, combining different things, this is our Hakanashi on SP. And with Hakanashi, you can see we had the distribution on Hakanashi candles. We came that 50 day. And now, once we get a white candle, that tells us that the, the reversal is about to happen. So, what I do, uh, combine Hakanashi reversal with MACD, then that will give me um, a confirmation that we are on a change of trend. We haven't gotten it 100%, although we've had these three big you know, candles. But if you would have used like CCI, we actually would have gone, you know, we would have gone above, in this case, uh, the oversold position. So that was good. And then we have the money flow index. We just talked about the money flow and you can see there was distribution here. And now finally there is some accumulation coming. It's not as strong. So although the prices are, these are big candles. It was a big technical reversal, but we don't have the strength yet. So we wanna see more money flow coming in as far as the volume goes. 
the next chart I want to share with you um, the Bollinger Bands. So this is a two standard deviation around the mean. It's a 20 day moving average. These are all daily charts, by the way. And now I'm using slow stochastics. And it tells me how, again, basically we were oversold, the momentum is going positive, and we have, uh, we went outside the Bollinger Band and came in, and I'm using Williams percentage R, now that one, to read it just simply, once we go above zero line in this situation, then basically that's, when it's in green, that's actually good momentum will continue, it's not like oversold or bought in the sense that we, we like to, this doesn't mean we are overbought. We want to stay in the position till we go negative or we go um, below the uh, signal line. So now we are getting there. Let's see if the momentum will continue. And also accumulation distribution. Again, it's a trend similar to MFI. So again, as I mentioned, it takes more of the price range than just the closing uh, price. Uh, the next one, I use Keltner channel, which is based on the average true range. And it's on the, again, 20 bar or 20 day in this situation and parabolic SAR, you can see these dots. Now in some chart, this is from stockcharts.com. You know, if you did it on thinkorswim or you did like a trade station, the colors will be different. And the buy side is um, um, usually green and um, uh, it, it's a, like a bluish color and then sell side is red. So in this situation, they're all similar here, but this tells you, again, this is your support line. And this, when the sell happens, again, we went to buy, sell, and these are like a resistance and support. So basically when we hit that resistance line, uh, the sell sign, we move to the buy sign. So this becomes your support and it tells you that, uh, you know, we are an up movement. Um, rate of change, similar to other oscillators. Now, the last one I put down force. This force is from Dr. Alexander Elder. It is, uh, he came out with it and it's a combination of different oscillators. And again, once we go above zero, it's the, that gives us the buy signal. And we can also use extremes. I can look at the, the divergence in this one. We are really extreme that also gives us heads up that we are really overstretched. So just be careful with that. Um, the next two charts are basically gonna be combining what I've done. I've done the Ichimoku um, clouds, uh, which we have a class on that again, and the Fibonacci. And basically based on that, we, we can see, you know, I have the extensions We've gone to one point. So we went from the before Labor Day weekend, September 2nd to beginning of October from high to low. And basically we did extension to 161.8 and we've been hitting the resistance for almost three or four weeks from the middle of November, almost a month. So that has become, if we break that, then we will continue strongly going up here above the cloud. So there's a class for that. I just want to combine all of those. And in the bottom, what I've done, I've done the DMI plus, which is in the blue. That means the strength is to the upside. The red is the DMI negative. That's the selling pressure. And this is the ADX. ADX is neutral, doesn't care. Um, you know, it's a buying or selling. It just tells us the trend. So when the trend is above 20 or the number ADX is above 20, that means we are in trending market. So once we are we see like something like this, as long as we're above this number, basically that means that there will be continuation. Um, the last but not least of the charts is the, the, the linear regression channel. So this is a copy of one of my workspaces. And again, on the SPY, so basically we look at the, the midline, which is that's the, our, um, basically our data, where is the, the, the mean and the best fit area uh, based on 240 minutes or 60 minutes or 30 minutes, the yellow line. And then we go out one standard deviation and two standard deviations. So we look for, again, overextension when we are uh, 
extremely either outside the two standard deviation on the positive or negative. So I, I usually look at the daily, weekly, I look at the monthly, and then 240 minutes, 60 minutes, and 30 minutes. So that's an example of LRC or the linear regression channel. So with that in mind, I uh, appreciate your attention. I hope it was helpful. I tried to make it short and sweet. So this way um, um, you can follow up in other classes if you wanna get more in depth to understand all these indicators. So it was just an overview. I, um, I thank you again for being with us and I hope uh, you have a prosperous and profitable week ahead. Thank you very much. Can stop.